A common question I get from patients is, is astigmatism bad? And so what I tell my patients is that it's the degree of astigmatism that really matters. And astigmatism is not really bad. It just means that your eyes aren't perfect and my eyes aren't perfect. In fact, 50% of the world's eyes aren't perfect. So I wouldn't say it's bad, but there are a few things to know about the degrees of astigmatism and how you can prevent yourself from becoming more astigmatic. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Sian Aghori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. I'm also a glaucoma specialist. And today we're talking about all things astigmatism. So astigmatism happens when the front part of the eye, which is called the cornea, isn't perfectly round like a basketball and maybe more shaped like a football. Now you can also get lenticular astigmatism and that means that the lens that's inside the eye actually can get astigmatism. But most of the time, it's really the cornea that has astigmatism. So now because of this uneven shape of the front of the eye, when the light enters the eye, it's not able to focus sharply on the retina. It gets bent in different directions. The light needs to fall on the retina in order for the retina to process images and then send that back to our brain. So now instead of the image coming to a single sharp point, it spreads out and focuses on multiple points because of the shape. This can cause blurry vision, distorted vision, and it can cause both of those things up close as well as far away. Now, as I mentioned before, the most common reason for having astigmatism is when the front part of the cornea is uneven. But of course, like I said, the back part of the cornea can also be uneven and that can cause astigmatism. And you can also get astigmatism in the lens of the eye. When you have astigmatism, it typically affects both eyes and the values in both eyes, meaning the degree of the astigmatism in both eyes, tends to be very similar. So why do some people get astigmatism? Why do some people not get it? And when is it quote unquote bad for you? So astigmatism is something that you can be born with. It can also be something that you can acquire. So things that play a role in getting astigmatism are genetics, also pressure on the eyelid, as well as tension in the eye muscles, and also just aging can play a role as well. Astigmatism is not just one number, it's defined by two numbers. So as I mentioned that the cornea can be shaped unevenly, but if that football is like this and it's curved this way, that's gonna be a different prescription than if the football is curved this way or this way. So the degree of astigmatism is actually defined by something called an axis. So it's the middle number of the prescription and then there's a usually X sign and then the axis of the astigmatism comes after that. The axis of astigmatism is usually a number between zero and 180 degrees. Now you can also get astigmatism due to eye injury or eye surgery and other diseases that affect the eye or the cornea, like something called a pinguecula or a pterygium. So is astigmatism bad? First, let's talk about astigmatism in kids. So in children, astigmatism is especially concerning because it can lead to something called amblyopia or having a lazy eye. Amblyopia happens when the brain does not learn to see images clearly through one or both eyes, often because it's just not receiving that sharp image during that early visual development period. So since the child's vision is still developing, anything that causes a consistent blur on one side or both sides, like uncorrected astigmatism, it can actually interfere with how the brain builds the connections between the eyes and the visual pathways in the brain. This can be bad because if you don't correct astigmatism at a young age, it can lead to long-term vision loss in that eye. Studies actually show that 30 to 40% of children with amblyopia have astigmatism. In fact, there are some large research studies that found that astigmatism was found in up to 76% of children with amblyopia affecting both eyes. So even moderate levels of astigmatism, which is about a power of one diopter or more, significantly increase the risk in some populations. So kids with astigmatism were five to nearly 18 times more likely to develop amblyopia compared to those children without it. So this matters because 
amblyopia becomes harder and harder to treat the older a child gets. So recognizing astigmatism in children is really important and getting them in to see the eye doctor and have it corrected through glasses is very, very important because the child could suffer permanent vision loss. So when you ask if astigmatism is bad, well, it's bad if it's untreated, but if you can treat the astigmatism and help that child develop those visual pathways, then it's something that's been treated and it's not bad anymore. Now let's talk about adults and astigmatism. In adults, uncorrected astigmatism can cause blurry or distorted vision and it makes everyday tasks like reading, driving, especially driving at night with the lights coming at you, very difficult. It can also make using digital devices very difficult. It can also affect your contrast sensitivity. It can cause glare, halos, eye strain, and in older adults, it can even increase the risk of falls or accidents happening. So you want to, again, correct the astigmatism. So this means going in to see the eye doctor and making sure that if you have astigmatism, you're correcting it. Now, over time, if you don't correct astigmatism, it can actually reduce your quality of life, it can reduce your independence, and even your work productivity. But unlike children, adults have already gone through the critical period of that visual development. So if you don't treat the astigmatism right away, aside from it being very disturbing to your life, it should not impact how your vision will end up permanently. So uncorrected astigmatism in adults can cause functional issues and discomfort, but it will not permanently harm the visual system. Now, if you have astigmatism, and it is a very high degree of astigmatism, we worry about something called keratoconus. And keratoconus is a situation where the front of the eye is quite misshapen, and you get to the point where even glasses cannot correct it. And now this is actually not astigmatism. Now we are getting into keratoconus and that is actually a different disease process that requires a cornea specialist. So what can you do to protect your eyes? Eye rubbing is a big reason for developing more degrees of astigmatism in both children and adults. So it is very, very important that if you rub your eyes to do your best not to rub your eyes. So if your eyes are itching and that's why you're rubbing them, you need to figure out why they're itchy. Do you have eye allergies? Then do you need to treat them? Do you have something else going on? Is your contact lens not fitting correctly? Are you having some discomfort with it? So go into the eye doctor and evaluate not just your degree of astigmatism, but any other things that might be bothering you about the eye that can lead to eye rubbing and eye rubbing makes astigmatism worse, which is something that you definitely do not want to do. Because as you get into the super high degrees of astigmatism, like negative three, negative four, negative five, it can become harder and harder to really correct. While we can make glasses that do go up to those levels, most contact lenses will not correct extremely high degrees of astigmatism. So then you become limited. So to sum it up, Uncorrected astigmatism in children is very, very concerning and yes, is bad, but corrected astigmatism gives children a really good shot at having good vision for the rest of their lives. In adults, uncorrected astigmatism is more disturbing to your life, but it will not affect your permanent visual development because those pathways have already been developed. However, you want to make sure you're not making astigmatism worse or leading to something called keratoconus through things like eye rubbing or putting pressure on the eyelid. So go in to see your eye doctor, get a full evaluation so you know what to do for your best eye health. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.